Hi everyone, welcome back to Homeschool Peace. I'm Cassandra, I'm a homeschool mom of three young kids. Here in our home for our math curriculum, we use Math UC. All three of my kids this year are using the Math UC program and they're at different levels through Math UC. This video today, I'm just gonna be sharing some of my tips and tricks and things that I found that work really well when teaching multiple kids Math UC at the same time. So if you also have multiple kids and you're trying to teach the math you see, hopefully some of these ideas that are in this video will just really help you out when you're working through your math curriculum for the year. If you're new to Math UC, check out my pros and cons video that I did on Math UC. I have that link below. That'll just give you a really good idea of the program, the flow through the material, and some really good close-ups of the inside of some of the student workbooks, as well as the teacher guide. So go check out that video if you have not really heard much about the Math UC program. This year I have a child in primer, one in alpha, and my other one is in gamma this year. And so my kids are on the younger side. So if you have some older kids going through math you see and they're a little bit more independent and you're able to sort of send them off to go work on their math problems and then just simply come back for help. If your kids are at that age, you know, that's an amazing age where they can work more independently. My kids are definitely on that younger side that they really require me to sort of stand over them or check in with them and really help them through their math work. So if that applies to you, if you have younger kids that you're working through some of the earlier elementary levels of math you see, hopefully, you know, some of these tips will help you through teaching those levels. So my first tip is really simple. It's just to make sure you're actually reading the teacher manual. And I know that sounds simple, but what happens with Matthew C, because you have that video that your kids are watching when they're first starting the new material or that new lesson, and then you're using those student workbook pages. So what ends up happening is you hit a point that you're watching that video and then you're sort of teaching from the video and then using the worksheets. And I've even hit a point that I've gone a couple of our lessons and then I suddenly realized that I missed a few chapters of actually reading through the teacher manual. Why I find that important is inside the teacher manual, there's some additional ideas or fun, you know, extra activities that they have in there that you can do with your kids, as well as even some mental math activities. You're just asking your kids out loud to um, go through some addition or subtraction facts, whatever they're working on, and you're doing some mental math with them. And so if I've I found that I've actually skipped those and so I've had to sort of rewind a little bit and just go through some of that because it is really some nice extra stuff. As well as when you are reading through the teacher manual, you'll have a better idea of like what's coming up, especially when you have, you know, multiple kids. So for me, I'm like reading through three different teacher manuals and seeing like what's coming up, what am I gonna be teaching this week? So I really highly recommend just taking that minute, make sure you're actually reading through the teacher manual and using the teacher manual to help you when going through the lessons. For my tip number two, this one's actually really my favorite recommendation that I have, is to stagger the start of the new lesson. So when you're going through the lessons, you have that video that your kids are watching, and that first first day, maybe second day, that are going through the new materials requires like the most teacher involvement. You know, maybe you're watching the video, then you're going back to the table, you're pulling out the blocks, you're walking through the blocks, maybe you're doing some stuff on the board, and your child really just needs some help while they're like learning the new material. When you move through the first, say, three worksheets, you move into the, that systematic review. So they're reviewing the information that they've done in that lesson as well as previous lessons, and then the application worksheet and then the test. So when you get sort of past those first three worksheets or that first one or two days of a new lesson, I find that my kids are able to work a little bit more independently. I mean, at my kids' ages, I'm still like making sure they're actually doing the work, sort of hovering a little bit and, you know, checking the work as they go and if they have questions they can ask me but they can at least sit a little bit off to the side and work on their map if I'm needing to work with another one of my kids so what I found is if it just happens just because everyone's pace is different through the different levels there'll be a day that all of a sudden two of my kids need to watch a video and have the introduction of a new lesson on the exact same day and I have just felt that's like so much 
all on one day. So what I will do is I will just take one of the kids, whether they're maybe need a little bit extra practice or even maybe they're just a little bit ahead of my original plan. I'll just have one day that they'll just do some extra practice and I can set them up on the Matthew C drill page, which I'll get into that drill page soon because that's another recommendation, but I'll set them up on maybe the drill page and they're just practicing some math facts for one extra day well, then I'm able to shift my focus for that one school day with the student that is having the new lesson and I'm able to help them and teach that new material so that then the very following day, then that child who is just doing that extra practice will then have their new lesson. And it doesn't happen all the time. It just happens randomly through the school year that it all fall on the same day. And so I just make sure that doesn't happen by sort of staggering when the new lesson is being introduced. So if you have multiple kids, you know, really take that recommendation because that really has helped me and made it so that I don't have like a really crazy math day all in the same day. My tip number three, and this I also shared as part of that pros and cons video. So if you watch that, this part's a little bit of a repeat, but I think it's really important to bring up is that you don't have to do every single worksheet that is in the material. So for Matthew C, there are 30 lessons and for each lesson, there are three lesson worksheets, three systematic review worksheets, and the enrichment application worksheet and then the test. So that's going to be like seven different worksheets plus then the test. And so what I found with my students, if they sit down and they really know this information, like if we're simply working on skip counting by twos and they already know how to skip count by twos and it, they're really fast with it, you know, maybe I'll do one lesson worksheet and I'll skip those other two lesson worksheets grab one of the systematic review worksheets the next day, make sure that they know what they're doing plus remembering the things from the previous chapter, and then maybe the next day I'll give them the test. And I'll just move them a little bit faster on the things they actually know. So then when we hit a point that we need to spend some more time on a new topic that maybe they're struggling with, we can spend that extra time. But the other reason why it helps not doing every single worksheet and being able to move them a little bit faster is if you have that day that all the lessons sort of hit on the same day for the start of a new lesson, you then have a little bit more wiggle room to be able to have that one student maybe just have an extra practice day and you're not feeling like, oh, pressure that I have to do this worksheet today. Instead, you can set them up on the drill page or just do some extra games with them for math time and just have them just practice whatever they were working on. And so that gives you that extra, you know, a little bit of wiggle room to be able to move your lessons around if you are sort of working a little bit ahead, especially when they already know the material. So just don't feel like you have to do every single worksheet, especially when you have multiple kids within the different levels. All right, so my tip number four, I mentioned about the Matthew C drill page. If you have not used the drill page, it's right on the Matthew C website. I have the link below. What I really love about the drill page is you're able to select the exact problems you want your kids to practice. And so it's not just like, there's a lot of really great math games and we have even used like Extra Math is a really great website and we've used that for practice. But what's hard is they just, they have a system of when the facts are introduced and you as the parent aren't really selecting those math facts. So I love that on the drill page for Matthew C, I actually go in there and I can select the exact problems that I want them to work on. Why that really helps then is on a day where I need to really focus say on one of my students and then the other one is just say they're working on their nine facts. I've already reviewed the lesson material but they're just practicing their nine facts for the day and they're supposed to have a worksheet for those nine facts. You know, I'll look at their worksheet, see what problems they're supposed to be working on, but then I can actually set them up on the computer, go to the Matthew C drill page and just select that they're working on their addition nine facts and you just check a box and then they're gonna get 20 questions that are those say nine facts, if that's what I selected. And they're just gonna be going through and practicing those nine facts and they're able to instantly know if they got the answer right or not. And then at the end, I can see the score that they got when going through the 20 questions. So my tip number five is if you have an older child who is able to help, that is a great resource to pull in. So my older child who is currently doing the gamma level, he actually really enjoys helping out for my younger child who's doing the primer level. Level. You know, if she's just working on place value or some really simple, easy addition, you know, he seems it's like fun being almost like the student teacher to come in and sort of help. So if you really need to shift that focus to really help another student 
with their math work. You can always just pull in your older child if say they're not busy working on math at the moment and have them just help run through. So I'll go through and say, here, you know, these, this is the worksheet we're working on. Can you, you know, walk through it with the younger child? And I'll just listen to him as he will work with my younger child and, you know, jump in if needed. But he does a really great job and just being able to pull in an older child to help a younger child is just a great resource right inside your house. My final tip that I have is to pull in games, math games, when you can. So with Matthew C, obviously the star part of Matthew C is the blocks, and we use the blocks all the time. We love using the blocks, and especially when introducing a new concept. I do wish Matthew C had a few more games in it, so one of the things I added was this nice math scale, and I actually have the link below. I just picked this up on Amazon. It's really great for, for practicing those math facts, especially in those earlier elementary levels of Matthew C. So it's a simple weighted thing. So if I would just say to my child, okay, what is two plus three? And then I would let them take the other weight and they would put it on the five. And so they're going to verify that the two plus the three equals five and they can see that the scale balances. And then, you know, you can use this for finding an unknown number. You know, maybe the answer, you tell them that the answer is going to be 14 and you can say what plus seven equals 14, so they're then able to put that on for seven, because seven plus seven, 14. So you could do it that way. You can also do it as a subtraction problem as well. So, you know, if I said, okay, 12, 12 minus six, what's 12 minus six is six. So you can use it as a subtraction practice as well. The other thing you can do, you can actually do it as multiplication. So this year with my son, he's doing the multiplication level. So you can do it, you know, let's say if it's five times two, so we have two of these weights on the five, two times five, what's two times five? Two times five is 10. So you can practice it both as well with multiplication. So really just bring in some extra games. I've actually pulled my kids' worksheets that they're supposed to do for the day, and I'll have them all sit around at a table, and I'll just have this in the center. And so then I will rotate for each child. You know, for my youngest one, um, she's just going through place value at this moment, but when she was, say, just learning her numbers, I would just give her a token and say, okay, find number eight. So her job was just to put this on eight. And then I would rotate to the next child who she's in the alpha level. And I would say, okay, what is two plus two? And then have her be able to answer two plus two is four. And then for my son who's in that gamma level, who's do doing the multiplication, you know, I could say to him, you know, what is three times three, okay, three times three is nine. So, you know, he can practice it that way. And so I would just do whatever's on the worksheet, but then just rotate around the kids. And that's really helpful because then all of a sudden you're done with every single worksheet, but you're using something like a scale so they don't really feel like they're doing their math for the day and it's just, it just really breaks up the lessons. The other thing that I really like to do too is just pull out a deck of cards. So we will just flip the deck of cards over whether we're working for addition or subtraction. It's just a single deck of cards. So maybe I flip over a two and then I flip over a four card and so two plus four, what is it? Six. So we'll just keep flipping over your cards using just a regular simple deck of cards and that's a really great way of practicing facts and just breaking up those lessons so if you have days that you just are able to combine them all around the same table and you're just running through your facts and practicing whatever their lesson they are on that's also just a really helpful way to get through all the material in one sitting so hopefully some of those ideas helped you out and you're able to use those when you're teaching multiple kids with Matthew C. It's definitely not an easy thing. You do feel like you're juggling a lot and you're you know, sometimes having to have one child wait a little bit while you're then jumping to the next child. So it's not like a super easy process, but you know, I have found some of those ideas definitely do help us during our day and we're able to get through math all at the same time. So if you like this video, make sure you hit click that like button and click that subscribe and I will talk to you soon. Thanks, goodbye. Bye.